Let's now take a look at Azure regions, obviously a popular topic because every time you deploy a workload, you have to choose where it is located. And you've probably seen this map before. It is updated all the time as Microsoft continues to update and expand their data center locations. But a region is exactly that, a location for your resources. It's an area containing at least one data center. So you'll hear about availability zones. Sometimes the region contains two data centers, you know, close enough uh, from a latency perspective, but far enough apart in the event of a disaster or something going wrong with that data center. So often we, we talk about availability zones, which you'll learn more about a bit later on. Uh, in addition, you usually need to select a region when deploying your resource. So again, you can't just deploy the resource and then choose the region. You have to select the region as part of the deployment of that resource, and you'll find out there's some reasons for that as well. Uh, and good examples of regions are East US. There's actually East US 2 as well, West US, Central India, East Asia, Germany Central, etc. Uh, and if you look at this map, when you zoom in, you'll see there's some of them say available region in kind of a blue circle. Uh, there's some that are sort of dotted around. In fact, some of those are already available uh, and this diagram already needs to be updated. Uh, and the availability zones present um, are basically those little dots that you see inside the blue circle means that you have multiple data centers available, say in central US there as a good example. So why do regions ultimately matter? Well, for one, for redundancy. So again, if you're deploying a workload in a region and that region has a failure for whatever reason, uh, it's helpful to make sure that you have another copy of that workload running in another region for redundancy sake. Uh, or even if you don't need it to be, you know, hot, hot active application, perhaps just if the region goes down, you want to bring the application back up, not instantaneously, but you've got data replicated to another region. In addition, there's sometimes specialized services. Often as Microsoft goes through releasing services, you know, they go through like a private preview, public preview before they go to GA. Often the services are only available in a subset of regions to begin with, and then they are rolled out to the other regions. But in some cases, services are only available in specific regions. Microsoft isn't going to deploy them in every single region. So to use them, you might have to consume them from one of those specific regions. In addition, the main one is data requirements met in boundaries. So what does that really mean? Well, residency is a big one. So physical or geographic location of your organization's data, where can that data actually reside? Sovereignty, so does it have to remain inside of the US? You know, there's rules between different countries and how data is governed. Um, those are key, key decisions as well. Compliance is another one that could be regulatory compliance or compliance with, say, your customer's policies. Uh, and last but not least, again, is resiliency. So choosing regions based on that resiliency requirement. And, and that's ultimately what leads to your decisions is looking at the data, looking at the workload, and then deciding which region or regions are the most appropriate location for that workload. Last but not least, there is the concept of region pairs. Now, why is this important? Well, essentially, Microsoft uh, creates pairs. So when they are doing maintenance on their data centers, they are only updating one region pair at a time. So what that means is East US would be updated, not at the same time as West US. They typically lag by about a week to two weeks. Typically, if there's some failure in some of the updates they apply, then they might hold off on the other region. I've actually lived through this with a customer. There was an issue in uh, South Central where the update got rolled out and they paused before they updated to North Central uh, because one of the, um, the VPN gateway connections went down as a result of the update. Uh, and so they had to decide to roll that back or have the customer fix some configuration. So uh, essentially though, it just means, you know, if you're gonna be in a region, your secondary backup region should be one that's in the same pair. So don't go and choose like East US and North Central as an example, they're not a region pair. So they could be updated at the same time. It always makes sense from a maintenance perspective to follow Microsoft's guidelines with region pairs. And that is regions in a nutshell for you.